So in the Fed average algorithm that we talked about, right, in the uh, original federated learning paper uh, by McMahon uh, here. So this particular paper, it introduces this Fed average algorithm. So it has its local objective function at individual clients and that it has its global objective function. So what would be the local objective function that it's trying to solve? So that is going to be fi of x and that is going to be, so how many data points are there and at the ith client? So this is local objective function at the ith client. Okay, so this is a function. So eta j is basically uh, so there are n n i sub points. So this is this is the local objective function f cap f i of x, right? Which is the average of all f i's in some sense. What would be the global objective function f of x? So local objective function is at the ith client. Global objective function is basically with the pers from the perspective of the central server, right? So what is the global objective function? something that we have already been looking at. When we talk about uh, distributed optimization, what is the objective function that we are trying to minimize? If every agent has its own private objective function f sub i. Yeah, so sum of it, but instead it will be a weighted sum of it, weighted by the number of data points. So essentially it would be, let's say k equal 1 through capital K. We, let's say n is the total number of data points times k of x which is where this fraction pk is essentially nk over total number of data points. Okay, so it's, it's basically the weighted sum of the uh, local objective functions. Is this clear? So let's, let's look at uh, how this particular fed averaging algorithm works. So we have two different updates. One is the server side update, which is on the global objective function. And then you have a local objective function. So we have the client side update, right? So as I said, what, what this algorithm does is, basically it communicates xt at each, let's say at the tth round, tth communication round, it communicates xt, the current set of weights. Now th using those weights, every edge device or the participating edge device would actually train a model would, uh, and then they would get their own, uh, let's say new set of uh, parameters, let's call them XTI for the ith client. And then they will be aggregated together. So they will be performing tau i number of local updates here, right? Something that we have already looked at. So they will be performing tau, tau sub i number of local updates and then this information would then be sent to the centralized server. So let's see how this particular algorithm works. So this algorithm has two, uh, two components. One is the server update. This is so we are describing the Fed average algorithm here. So you have the server update. So in server update, what happens is that the first thing is the initialization. So you initialize the model parameters at let's say x naught. Okay. Now for each communication down. So for each communication round, t. So t is going to be a number from 1 to some capital, let's say t minus 1. So what, what happens? Or if it's the start from 1, then there's no need of t minus 1 here. Okay. So for each communication round, we select a set st of 
m clients okay so you randomly select a set of m clients out of those k capital k available total clients right so m clients uh, from k clients so this is selected uniformly at random then we perform a function called client basically we run this function called client update so client update would have the client index i and to the client it would be sending its current weights or the current est estimate of the weights which is going to be xt right at the chosen client and receive. So, what are you going to be receiving? You are going to be receiving xt plus 1i. So, after client i basically uses this current weight xt and then it performs multiple local updates, it is going to have an updated value of xt. Let us call this xt plus 1. Uh, i where i ind indicates it is the ith client. So, it receives that information from the uh, from client i in basically in your set st right. And then uh, essentially aggregate Okay, so this is what you do. So this is the server side of things. Now look at this particular function client update. Client update. So let's see how this particular function works. So what you are going to do is you are going to initialize the weights. So, initialize the model with xt, right? Whatever xt that you are going to be receiving, you are going to be initializing the model with that subset of weights. So, initialize the local model uh, as xt. Let me use a different notation. So, we are going to be using xt0 to indicate. So, first of all, it is going to be performing tau i number of local updates, the ith client. So, this 0 is going to indicate the number of uh, like basically how many updates have elapsed ok. And i is going to indicate the uh, that it is going to be the ith client, t is basically indicates the communication round. So, it is a tth communication round. So, this is going to be essentially xt right. So, you are going to be initializing this with xt uh, for and you run this for tau i number of local updates which is a n i ok. So, we are going to perform these many local updates. Next what do we do? Uh, so, for each local update index j in uh, 0 1 tau i minus 1. So, what do we do? Uh, do the following. So, we perform a gradient descent on the mini batch that we are going to be selecting during each local update ok. So, that is essentially the sample mini batch sample mini batch 
let's call that mini batch i think we'll just use the same notation so zeta j from the local data set d sub i right so every agent has got this every client has gotten this data set d sub i and we are going to be sampling uh, a mini batch zeta z zeta j from that uh, data set and on that data set you perform so you are going to get xt j plus 1 as xt j at the ith client minus the step size times you look at the stochastic gradient g evaluated at x i p j ok so this is this is what you are going to be doing so essentially performing a gradient descent on the local batch and then you will you will be having uh, these many rounds of local updates and after this is done so you are going to be returning So, what do you need to return? X i t tau tau sub i. So, that is what you are going to be returning and once you return this, so this is treated as x, x t plus 1 i from the client side perspective and then it basically aggregates. So, this is the fed averaging algorithm. Is this clear? So, essentially there are multiple parameters involved. One is the uh, the total number of uh, local uh, local epochs which is capital E the batch size is going to have a role and then there are other parameters like data heterogeneity and others that 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 are going to have a role uh, the number of clients that you end up choosing a sampling that is also going to play a role essentially the fraction of clients that are involved in each uh, each round of communication so that is so let us see how these different parameters affect the learning behavior and then we will try and uh, come up with a mathematical uh, result that basically captures our intuition and so on. So, this is this is an exam this is the uh, result from uh, so we have essentially trained two different types of neural network. So, is everyone aware of this MNIST data set which is a data set of handwritten uh, uh, essentially digit data set from 0 through 9 and I think it is a 28 by 28 cross 28 uh, uh, sort of binary like uh, images or grayscale images. So, so in this experiment two, uh, two different types of neural networks have been trained one is the two layer simple feed forward neural network and the other one is uh, convolutional neural network. So, and essentially what we show over here is the total number of communication rounds needed to ensure that this two uh, layer neural network is basically attains this 97 percent accuracy and the CNN that achieves 99 percent accuracy. Okay. So, on MNIST if you design a good enough neural network you can easily get 99.4, 99.6 kind of accuracy. So, so for CNN to achieve 99 percent accuracy it is not something uh, unheard of uh, on MNIST. So, the, so, so, the first thing that we, so we I mean two different types of experiments were performed when you had the IID or the IID data distribution across multiple uh, clients. So, in that case, so he in this case we are considering 100 clients. So, MNIST data set if you know it has 60 k images. So, 60 k images means uh, 60 k images of so that means uh, you have 6 k images of each label basically from 0 through 9 and when you have these 100 clients they are each receiving 600 examples. So, you randomly shuffle and partition so on an, on an average every agent would have the same number of uh, so everyone would have the same 600 images to work like similar distribution of 600 images to work with. So, that means out of those 600 images on an average 60 would be from digit 0, 60 would be from, from digit 1, 60 from digit 2 and so on for every for every agent. So, the data distribution is IID. In the non IID experiment what was done was the data was sorted by labels. So, essentially you had all the 0 digits followed by 1 digit. So, instead of random shuffling and partitioning it was sorted and then uh, and then sort of partitioned. So, divided into 200 shards of size 300 each. So, every agent and then for each client you essentially share two shards. So, essentially you what you end up doing is every agent would have these 300, 300 images from specific examples. So, at a time every client would only have at uh, would, on, would only have two sort of unique digits to work I mean only two digits to work with. 
so essentially either 0 1 similarly other client would may have 0 2 and so on right so that is that is how that is the non id experiment so the data distribution so each client does not have let's say visibility to every like other images right other than those two classes it would not have visibility to all other instances but because other models are also being trained on this and that there is information sharing with central server which is aggregating information from all other uh, clients so it is learning from their uh, their sort of training right so that is the non id experiment and you would imagine that if it's a non id experiment the number of total number of communication rounds is going to be required for the similar setting it's going to be much larger than the uh, id experiment that's what you see everything else remaining the same so this is the id setting this is the non id setting so you can see that the total number of communication rounds required uh, I, I think here you would see maybe a drastic change and so on so that this hyphen indicates that i mean the model could not reach this particular accuracy so essentially you could not train the model uh, to the desired accuracy so that's when, that's when the i mean the experiment could not be completed and that is denoted by this hyphen here and you can see that when you have 75 and 70 whereas uh, with non id case you had 443 380 number of uh, communication rounds and so on similarly over here you have these many ends, right so when you have data heterogeneity if the data is going to be heterogeneous the total number of communication rounds required to reach the desired accuracy that is for certain error threshold that is going to be much larger okay so the other thing so that is the effect of data heterogeneity so v is equal to infinity means you run the full batch gradient so the batch size is essentially the entire data set whereas v equal to 10 means you have you have a mini batch of size 10 So we are looking at the effect of data heterogeneity so that is clear uh, if the data is going to be heterogeneous you would require for, I mean many uh, number of communication rounds than if the data is hom homogeneous the other is about client participation. So when we see that the fraction C is tending towards 1 this number keeps on reducing right the number of communication rounds required keeps on reducing so that means as you are info aggregating information in the same communication step in the same communication round if you are aggregating information from let us say all the clients then you would require the fewest number of iterative communication rounds because then you would you would receive the entire data distribution whereas let us say this would be particularly relevant in the context of uh, heterogeneous data right. So when you have heterogeneous data and you are not aggregating information from all the clients so that means you may be missing out on certain put certain digits and that is why the communication I mean it, the number of total number of communication rounds required may go up as you increase this thing the total number of communication reco uh, rounds required basically goes down so if the if more and more agents are involved or more and more clients are involved the total number of communication rounds it basically decreases similarly if the data is homogeneous uh, or the data heterogeneity is lesser the total number of communication round also becomes lesser is this clear so this is about the effect of total number of local epochs or capital e so if capital E is lesser that means you are performing uh, lo fewer local updates and if you are performing fewer local updates then you would require uh, as you can see if you are performing fewer local updates then the number of uh, number of round communication round required is much more right. So but then for the same set of weights if you sort of train the model enough times on this then uh, basically perform multiple local updates on the same data set then the communication uh, total number of communication rounds required that sort of starts reducing as we okay so this is for the mnest cnn example then there is a shakespearean data set so this is training in lstm uh, for predicting the next word uh, based on the previous words and again you can see as you in, as you increase the total number of uh, local epochs and now total number of rounds required basically keeps basically increases decreases right so what about the batch size mini batch size how does that affect so first of all it is clear to everyone that as the total num number of local epochs increases you need fewer communication rounds to reach, reach the target accuracy that is clear right what about the batch size so if you have a, a larger batch size 
you would require fewer local updates, right? If you have a larger batch size, tau sub i was e n i by v, right? If you require larger, if you work with larger batch size, you would have fewer local updates and fewer local update means that essentially you increase the total number of communication rounds, right? As we saw that with when e was a small, we had fewer local updates. And in fewer local updates, we needed more communication rounds. Similarly, if you had larger batch size, that means fewer local updates and therefore you will have more communication rounds and that's what you see, right? If you have a larger batch size, the communication rounds required was 2488. If you have a smaller batch size, then it becomes lesser. Similarly, you have 401 here and when it's 10, it becomes 192 and so on. Is this clear? So essentially, if you have uh, larger number of local updates, then you would have a, then then you would have actually fewer communication requirement of fewer communication rounds to reach the target accuracy, and that is how E and B are affecting your uh, essentially E and B affect your tau i and tau sub i, and therefore they eventually affect the total number of communication rounds required. Is this clear? So this is just illustration of uh, how the batch size sort of impacts the total number of rounds required and you can see that when you have smaller batch sizes you reach the target accuracy much sooner than if you have the uh, if you have small larger batch sizes.